brother and sister that went into homosexuality. I have another sister that wasn't able to enter into marriage until she was in her 40s because of the pain of the family life that we had. I know about these things personally. After 20 years of observing this as my primary emphasis of my ministry, I have seen things, I have understood things that few people really have come together with. And so for all of these years, I have been focusing on this topic. I know more about this than almost anyone in the world. The, the, the fact of, of the matter is, every single person is heterosexual. That's the design of the human body. You have, you're either male, and with the exception of hermaphrodites, we've already established, this is a dysfunction, it's a biological dysfunction, a mutation, right? But other than that, every person is either biologically male or female. You have a, and you're, def, you're defined by that, by your genetics and your reproductive system. And what happens with a homosexual person, a homosexual, it's a heterosexual person who when they receive the impulse to have sex or to be attracted towards someone sexually, instead of turning toward the person that they're designed to mate with, they turn in the opposite direction to the person that they're not designed to mate with for all different kinds of factors. What has caused these people to end up in this condi condition that God condemns, that is hurting them, and that we want to help them to overcome? The three causes of homosexuality that I have observed that I have observed personally, and go in order of the number of people that fit into these categories, and that is sexual abuse. The majority of people that I've known that are homosexual were sexually abused as children, either by an adult or an older child. And actually, while we're on this topic, lesbianism, I think I mentioned this before, lesbianism is really more than anything else a retreat from the company of men. It's an escape from men because sexual abuse by men. That's now not everyone, but a very, very high percentage. I've never known, personally, I've never known a lesbian that wasn't sexually molested when they were a child. Then the second is gender identity confusion. And this is what Caleb was describing, right? The gender identity confusion is something that happens in early childhood, right? These are the people that, well, actually, when they say, I was born that way, these are the ones that actually usually believe it because this is something that happens before they even can speak. And with speech comes memory. When you're born, there's like a connection between you and your mom. You really don't even understand that you're separate people. And then comes a time when you realize that you're separate from your mom and then comes a time, 18 months to two years, very roughly, very with very people, when you realize that there's two kinds of people. There's mommy people and there's daddy people. And you decide, which one am I, right? Now, if you've got a dad, like Caleb's dad, who was emotionally distant, maybe even hostile, who was, who was an alcoholic, and you're a little boy, you know, 18 months old or two years, years old, and you're, oh no, I can't be like him. I can't be like him. I must be like mom, right? And then, once you make that decision about what your gender identity is, then you begin learning how to be a person by following their example. The third is rebellion against authority. And this is where, this is often the case where you've got family dysfunction as well. You know, why do young people rebel against authority, usually something bad has happened to them. You know? Otherwise, they would want to, to, to follow the track that they started in their family. But something happened, you know, the parents got divorced, or, or they suffered some tragedy or something. It may have nothing to do with sexuality. But because of that, they have an attitude. They have a bad attitude. They're not going to go along. They're going to be antisocial. In America, in England, the new way to show your rebellion and, and, and shock your parents is to act gay. You know, maybe even to enter into a gay identity. You might not even practice homosexual conduct. You may just act that way so you can shock people. Uh, and that's more and more is happening. Everybody that I've ever encountered or know about falls into one of those categories, sometimes into both. 
Because if you're a gender identity confused child, and you're a little boy who's manifesting effeminate traits, and there's a homosexual guy that's, that actually is immoral enough to want to have sex with kids, and he sees you, you're an easy target. Because he knows you don't have a good father figure. And there's good news in that. Because it means if you acquired that through environmental factors, you can overcome it. Yes. Right? They say gays are born that way, and it has been proved. It's been proven that they're born that way. That is a lie. That's what's called a lie. It is not true. There is no definitive scientific study that has ever proved that homosexuality is innate. more about this than almost anyone in the world.